the topic that I, that I talked, that I, that I listed for Moriki is to say um, information technology, some things change, some stay the same. And I'd like to show you this little picture and ask if anybody in class knows what that is. No, not, but you're in the general direction. It's not a CPU either. We got, it's a hard drive. Yaku, hey. Yaku, um, you was a... Um, uh, <laughs> wow, amazed myself. This is a picture of the first hard drive. The <laughs> a picture of the first hard drive um, developed by IBM. 10 megabyte capacity. And it was seen as a breakthrough. It was, it was shown in television screens all over the world. And it was deemed uh, a, a tremendous breakthrough in the world of computer technology. Um, I begged this one from the IT guys yesterday. Um, 10 times the capacity. Um, a thousand times less in weight and capacity wise and speed wise a complete different animal to what we have there. Um, but this device is also obsolete. Um, it's being slowly changed. However, if I scale the technology in this device for you and you want to understand how a modern hard drive in your laptops and computers is, um, if you take a Boeing 747 and you fly a two meter above the ground at twice the speed of sound at Mach 2 and you have little doesn't matter what, matchsticks, grass blades, one millimeter apart. And that device, that pilot in the Boeing or the Boeing itself has got the capability to count every single one. Then you've scaled the technology that we have in modern hard drives. Um, it's amazing how far we've progressed from those days to where we are today. Some things change, but some stay the same. And I have permission of my clients to use this picture of those that I consult to. And quite often, this is what you find when you go into a company, that it's more a source of frustration. And quite often, when I'm doing the first lecture on information systems management, and I see students entering through that door, you can literally see their shoulders, that they do not believe that the business school has got the audacity to force them through 15 sessions of information technology. Surely, there are better things to do in life, like drink pinutas or whatever the case might be. Um, but it is rather important. Um, because it is part and parcel, it's the fiber of modern business. But the one quote um, that, I, that I love is from William Gibson. And he said that the future is already here. It's just unevenly distributed. Some of the technologies that you will adapt in your business next month, next year, next decade, might be here already. It's just unevenly distributed. It might be in a laboratory in IBM. It might be a group of people in Kenya. It might be that your competitor is already trying it out. But quite often, you will find that these things that change business are already in use somewhere. And the challenge for many organizations is to be on this spread of technology or ahead of the spread of technology that you can actually catch the wave and get some value from that. Now, I'd like to draw a distinction, and I do apologize for the one or two of my students that I see in class, because they will tell you I am like a broken record on the following topic, and they have heard the following slides before. But I think it's rather important to make a very clear distinction between information technology and information systems. And then I will get back to the technology side and talk about the impact. But if we talk about information technology per se, what does IT mean? Um, there's a big difference between IT and IS. And IT is the components that we can actually label and say, this is hardware, software, networks, and data. It's the technology components, the stuff that we can touch and we can feel and we can see it. And there's been significant advances on all dimensions. Now, on the hardware side, um, there's been very interesting things happening. Um, this is the fastest computers in the world or the best performing computers in the world and the current computer leading it, all the nerds in the world had a very nice moment in June um, when the quickest computer in the world uh, for the first time in the history was able to do 10 to the uh, power of 15 calculations per second. And, and it, it, let me just say, it adds one plus one fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. And it was a very big moment in the world of computing. Um, that's a three-dimensional mouse because the, they tell us that the web is going to change into a 3D environment. And the pointing devices that we use like this um, is no longer going to be sufficient in a couple of years' time because we would like to move in the third dimension as well. And this is probably one of the nicest innovations for students. It's a pen that does a digital recording. 
And as you are sitting in class here and you're making all the notes, it's recording my voice. And when you review your notes in a week or a month's time and you come to a little doodle that you were busy making, you said, so why on earth was that butler fellow on again when I nearly fell asleep and I made this little doodle? All you do is just double tap the pen there and it will start playing the voice recording at that specific point in time. It's got a little cue on it that you can forward and backward and it's proving a massive success due to the simplicity of use. You take it out and you start writing and at the end of the day, you put it in its um, back in the cradle and that's it. And at any later stage, you just double tap and then it starts playing, playing the recording. Uh, portable printers probably become standard in cell phones fairly soon. Um, tablet PCs we understand and we all understand the power we have here. The software side, um, some brands that were unknown for us 10 years ago, um, biggest IT, or one of the biggest IT companies in the world, uh, Microsoft, the re-emergence of Apple, quite interesting, the rise of open source software like Linux, um, company like Skype, which I'll tell you a little bit about later. But certainly there's a lot of logos and companies and certainly you can't travel into an airport in South Africa without seeing that logo. The networking side, um, the internet has fundamentally changed the business world. Um, it's true that the population of the world has changed as well, um, but we took the telephone 38 years and the television 13 years to reach 50 million users. It took the internet four years. And we're sitting at 1.6 billion internet users. 24% of the world's population has got access to the internet. Challenges in Africa, we're sitting at about 4%. When we talk about information technology, there's hardware, software, networks, and data. But when we talk about information systems, it's where we get people and processes. And in business, information technology is the sexy, interesting stuff that the IT guys like to talk about. And information systems is what we need to operate efficiently. And it's the people and the processes that make the real difference. The first type you get is your competitive necessity investments. When you're in primary school on the playground, your biggest fear is to be thrown from the sandpit. The sandpit is your business environment. Whether you service clients with a specific service, you sell a product onto them, whatever you're doing, your sandpit is your business environment. Whether you're a small player or a big player, that is where you operate. And competitive necessity investments are the things that I need to do to ensure that I don't get evicted from the sandpits. It's the stay in the race kind of projects, and it's the kind of projects that we are fairly familiar with in the IT environment. We need to get quicker at doing certain things. We need to do things less cost uh, more cost effective. And um, Herman Yenis, the MD of Mixit, actually said earlier this year in Net Profit, something that stuck in my mind. When somebody asked him, he says, is there really some opportunities, some opportunities out there to do some new innovative businesses like Mixit? Uh, do the opportunities exist? And he thought for about two seconds and then he said this. He says, there is always somebody out there that is taking too long to deliver a service or asking too much money to deliver a service. He says, and if you can find that where somebody is taking too long to deliver a service or ask too much money, you've got your niche. And he then said, and quite often, not always, quite often, you can use technology to exploit that specific niche. Now, these applications of IT is where I try to do things quicker, I try to do it at lower costs, and it's the kind of things that we are fairly um, well known. And it's the investments that I believe, it says, don't get evicted from the sandpit. If you do these things right, then you will find yourselves in business in the next couple of years, and you will stay within the sandpit. Your peers are not evicting you by being very much better at what you are doing in the sandpit. If I lost somebody from the sandpit, the second type of, of investments is where all of a sudden one day you go to the sandpit but you've got a new bucket and you've got a new spade and you walk up to the sandpit and you stand on the edge of the sandpit with your bucket and spade and all the other children turn around and they say, hey Martin, you're our hero and they just make space for you in the sandpit and you move into the sandpit and you become the hero of the sandpit. You're still doing fundamentally the same thing, playing in the sandpit, but now you're just so much better than anybody else playing with sand. And that's the kind of projects where we do win the race investments to improve service beyond what is expected, reduce prices dramatically, increase effectiveness, and select and manage these projects that really take us to the forefront of the industry. And that's where the rest of the industry are trying to catch up. 
Now, I do use this example because I've never had this experience in a sandpit of a young girl cheering me on. But I, it's not too late. I still go back to the sandpit every now and again. Now, what happens next? Monday, you were not thrown from the sandpit because you were fairly good at playing sand. Tuesday, you brought your bucket and spade to the sandpit. And now everybody's saying, our hero, make space. What happens on Wednesday? What happens on Wednesday? Say again? Everybody else has got the same, quite possibly. There's no more sand. <laughs> yeah? Come on, I know you can do it. What happens on Wednesday? Someone else comes with a better bucket? No, not necessarily, because then they're still in competitive advantage investments. You go to the sand pit and there's nobody. They're all playing marbles. They're all playing marbles. Some wise person came to school with a bucket of marbles or a bag of marbles. And you go into the sand pit and you've got your bucket and your spade and you are ready to be the player. And there's no little girls to cheer you on, or little boys, because they're all playing with their marbles. And that's what McKinsey terms rule-changing innovations. And that's where they are saying that you do projects that create unique products or services. Now, obviously, this distinction is not as clear as I try to make it out to be to say competitive necessity investments, competitive advantage, and rule-changing innovations. But what McKinsey's research is indicating is to saying that companies that can do this by having products and services that is very difficult for the competition to keep up with are the companies that are really gaining the most from their IS investments. Some guidelines for beauty. Um, do not be dictated by technology. It remains a tool, never a solution. I tell all the students in this class, if an IT salesperson uses the word solution, then chase them away because technology, systems, information systems, is never a solution. The software, they love selling software as a solution. Hardware, software, networks, data, people, and processes is a solution. And if you think you buy software as a solution, you're making a huge mistake. Always keep an eye on technology, any new technology, any one of those four components. Don't be ashamed to ask and learn from others. It's always worth doing that. Instill a culture that allows for errors. Now, a cheetah, a cheetah has got a tail um, that helps it to become a perfect hunting machine. And that's what I believe what technology is in your business as well. Technology is the tail of the cheetah. I have never seen a cheetah without a tail successfully chasing down and killing an antelope. I've also never seen a tail chasing an antelope with a cheetah in tow behind. <laughs> But the two work together. Where the cheetah is the business, is your business, your strategy, what you do, what you should be doing. And if the tail, the technology, complements the function of the cheetah to run quickly, stably, and be able to change direction fairly quickly to find its prey, then it's working as a total unit. And that is what the technology is in the modern business. And the two slides, the previous slide was a cheetah in full flight, and this slide, which took quite a while to come up, is just to explain that that tail is a technology within your business. It's an integral part of your business, but only if you have a cheetah. It doesn't matter how good your marketing is, if you put that tail on a squirrel, it's not going to work. It's not going to work.